I'll definitely check this out. Well, thanks for the call, Geneva. No problem. Have a great Have night. Have a great night. It's, uh, can I say something? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Vance wants to say something. It's, uh, I'd like to uh, say uh, something tonight if uh, I can have the floor for a moment to read an open letter to uh, David Weigel. He's the author of a, a, a prog series that was written on uh, Slate.com. Okay, yeah, let's uh, take it away. We've got Vance is in the studio, and he wants to read his... Uh... Okay, you got to... All yours. This is an open letter to David Weigel, the author of the Prague series featured on Slate.com. First, let me congratulate you on pulling off such a noble endeavor. Getting a mainstream outlet to cover, excuse me, to getting a mainstream outlet to allow an article about progressive rock in 2012 is no easy accomplishment, and for that I tip my hat to you. Unfortunately, I have to say that while I find your article interesting to a point, I am puzzled as to why you would care whether or not Prague was perceived as cool or acceptable by music fans who are not fans of the genre. That is their right, and in my opinion it is their loss. Just as I don't care to judge the music or movies that they enjoy by my yardstick, I do not care about how they rate my selections by theirs. The primary offense I take with your article is your choice of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer to embody the band with which the reader takes the journey through the 60s and 70s to Prague's so-called downfall with their massive misfire, Love Beach. Yes, they are an easy target, because when they were successful, they were as great as anyone had ever been. Their self-titled debut in Tarkas stand as achievements that transcend the time in which they were birthed. But because they fell, and yes, they did fall, you chose them. Why not choose a band like King Crimson, who to me embody the spirit of progressive rock more than any other band? They constantly evolved, and yes, progressed, from their psychedelic tinge debut to Lark's Tongues in Aspic, and your your description of the creation of Lark's Tongues in Aspic Part 2 is condescending and offensive to me as a fan of King Crimson and Progressive Rock. A band like King Crimson managed to move into the 1980s and beyond, far beyond your chosen expiration date for progressive music, and received some of their best-reviewed records of their entire career for albums like Red, Discipline, and Three of a Perfect Pair. And I only say this because the opinions of non-progressive fans seem to be so important to you. I am disappointed in you and your article, sir. For someone who claims to have been a fan of progressive rock, your opinions are most definitely quite regressive. But what is to be expected of someone who in their first draft of this article falsely claimed that Bill Bruford was a founding member of Asia? Sincerely, Vance. Wow. Wow. That was heavy. Now do you feel... Oh, he's, he's gone. He just put his headphones on. This guy's... And these guys just step all over the show. They come in, do what they want, and then just... Not a whole lot of uh, give and take. FMU, you're on the air.